Charlie, what do you think about the third parties and the movement for People's Party? And let's, we can talk about it at the national level, but more importantly, I want you to talk about at the local level, what did the our revolutions, the working parties, people, how did they help you and your mayor's race or how did they help in general? I want to get your experience with that. Yeah, this is an issue where it really, really gets to the system of elections and, uh, you know, what makes the most sense to do. So I am a firm believer that the two party system is the root of so much of our problems in this country. Um, when I was running, I like to say that the only thing worse than the two party system is the one party system. And that's what we have here in New Brunswick. And so I was proud to challenge from outside the two party structure. But I also recognize that there's times and moments and systems where it makes sense to run within the party structure. And so I certainly don't fault anybody who, who chooses to run in the Democratic Party. Uh, but I do feel that, you know, we need a systemic change. So things like ranked choice voting can, can help with that. Mm -hmm. um, also, just the rules in general in New Jersey are very uh, opposed to third parties. The Republicans mm -hmm. and the Democrats get to decide all the rules. They get automatic favorable placement on the ballots. Yep. They get to have these party primary elections where the government pays to decide who they're, you know, who's going to be the nominees of those uh, folks. And if you decide to register as a, a green or a socialist, you essentially lose the right to vote in the primary. You no mm -hmm. longer uh, have influence over who the Democratic Party is going to pick. And yeah. you're essentially sidelining yourself from running or voting in those elections, which in urban areas and, and, and you know, just uh, blue areas in general, you're you're basically giving up your chance to to, to pick who, who your representative is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely think we need systemic change. I think we need to treat independents and third parties as equal players in the mm -hmm. field. So, uh, you know, just the way the elections run, once you see behind the scenes, everything is Republicans and Democrats, mm -hmm. and they decide the rules. They are there. They say we have checks and balances. We have a Republican and a Democrat. Yeah. Well, you know that's great, except that you know half the people in New Jersey are not either. Yeah. Uh, so those mm -hmm. folks aren't adequately represented. I think we need better systems to to do that. I think you know ranked choice is one way. I think you know building up these these third parties is great, but in, in New Jersey at least it seems like it's a uh, you know, like trying to build a sandcastle right next to the ocean. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just, it's it just whatever progress you make seems to get washed away. So do you uh, think you know? that the, like, for example, the, the movement for People's Party, we have DSA already doing what I'm about to say, like mm -hmm. having build your brand within and then run within the Democratic Party. That's what DSA does right now is we know who they are, the Democratic Socialists of America, but then they run their candidates as Democrats. You think that's like probably the best way to get through the primaries and then get into power? Certainly in New Jersey, it's it's mm -hmm. it's one of the only paths forward for that, that kind of thing. I know New York has very different ballot laws. So, mm -hmm. for instance, they have you know working families in New York is an actual party with an mm -hmm. actual line mm -hmm. on the ballot where you know they can run their own candidate or they can endorse the Democrat and have the Democrat appear twice on the ballot. Mm -hmm. And people want to voice their support for working families. They can vote for the same candidate on that other line and, mm -hmm. and get that message across to, to the uh, uh, to the powers that be. Mm -hmm. In New Jersey, working families is just, uh, you know, a nonprofit advocacy organization mm -hmm. and they, you know, they don't have the institutional uh, mechanisms that are available there in New York because we don't have uh, that system. That system is called fusion voting mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. where, you know, Correct. different parties can endorse the same candidate and, and appear on the ballot. So, you know, New, and I know in New York, they've been in the middle of the pandemic, they've been trying to undo those rights and undo those rules to, to make it harder for working families and other people to continue to do this. But in New Jersey, the system is already way rigged against uh, uh, anything like that. So it's it's a much, much more difficult um, thing. But yeah, I, I do agree that, you know, uh, uh, building a brand and building a movement that's independent is important, but there's nothing wrong with running in the Democratic Party. In fact, in, in New Jersey, it's one of the only ways to, uh, to to have success. So let's talk about the organizations and how they help you um, and how, how much experience do you know? How, how powerful or how well known are they? So f let's go down the line. Our revolution. Do you know, like, the head of the great. New Jersey branch or whatever? Like, tell me what you think. 
Yeah, so I was honored to get the endorsement of our mm-hmm. revolution. Okay. Awesome. I uh, have strong ties to the Rutgers Progressive Group, which awesome. is also our revolution. Rutgers is their other name, mm-hmm. and so they they've been very supportive. I've worked closely with them for years, and and uh, a lot of those folks helped with my campaign, and so it was an honor to get their endorsement and. Uh, on a practical level, the main thing they helped with was they allowed us to use their their texting platform. So we were able to send thousands of texts to voters, uh, and it was really, really helpful. And we just would not have been able to afford that software if nice. it wasn't for their generosity. So they definitely came through and helped big time. Nice. Working Families Party. So, yeah, the Working Families Alliance here in New Jersey uh, is a great organization, and I would have loved to get their endorsement. I definitely was pushing for it. I did not. They, uh, uh, you know, uh, but I, I did feel we had a lot of synergy. So, like okay. for for example, um, you know, I made one of the points in my campaign to, uh, you know, fight for fifteen and practice what I preach, mm. uh, and actually say, okay, we've got crossing guards who are getting paid less than fifteen dollars an hour. If mm. I'm elected, they'll all get a raise to fifteen dollars an hour at least, and all the other, mm. you know, city employees paid by the city mm. are going to actually make this you know this wage that that we're saying everyone deserves mm-hmm. uh meanwhile my opponent uh supported the fight for 15 but didn't do anything about these people he's paying less than 15 an hour for mm-hmm. uh i know working families was pushing him and yeah uh you know so we sort of were both pushing him to do better and be better yeah uh, but for whatever reason they, they did not make an endorsement one way or the other but i definitely pushed them to uh, take more of a stand because uh, those crossing guards deserved a raise, and we got them a raise uh, uh, nice. during the campaign. Oh, wow. Nice. We, yeah, See, that's we, we, you know, we had an event on Labor Day. Awesome. We announced, hey, here's my plan. Here's exactly how we're going to get everybody to mm-hmm. 15 or more. And just 48 hours later, two days later, the governor of New Jersey came 500 feet away from where I stood and made that announcement oh, and wow. stood with the mayor and endorsed the fight for 15 and working families was there as a big crowd and everything. And so, you know, they were kind of following my lead wow. uh, on that particular issue. And I was happy to happy to help. I would have liked to get working families endorsement. But yeah. at the end of the day, we were we were all pushing in the same direction. And and uh, and ultimately, we got the crossing guards a race. So that was a good. Wow. Thing. This this is the thing. We, this is what I'm talking about. We want progressives to run, even though we don't. Sometimes we don't win. And unfortunately, in Charlie's case, he didn't become mayor. But we're able to push the Overton window to the left. Just if we're inching in that direction, it's totally worth it. I'm sure those crossing guards and the other public um, employees were very happy that you ran that and gave them a raise pretty much. And I want this show to be about and basically trying to get as many normal people to get in the fight. We're on Twitter. We got our Twitter fingers and that's fine. But we need people to volunteer, pick up the phone, give a dollar here, give a dollar there. And we can definitely make a difference in a small way. And when we all do it, it grows into a big snowball effect.